Yeah. Where were we? Yeah. Uh, bad we're talking about film. Training. Yeah, bad film trainers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, um, I I understand there there, there are a lot of like uh, institutions that train. Is it drama specifically? Not really, like acting or. You know, like very specific, but they put it in such a general way, like drama and stuff. You're able to pick actors from there as well. Are they uh, acceptable talent for the for like the Caliban Zambezi Magic, for example? Fillers. Um, as fillers, I'm not aware of people. What do you mean fillers? Now, are you talking about background artists as an extras? Sure. The term yeah, that extras. Likes? Yeah. Oh yeah, um, that is the term. I guess, yeah, but it's actually background artists or background actors because people find extras to be demeaning. I've worked as one before. It's, it's actually being an extra on set is like one of the hardest things because you're just there the whole entire day and you're the most underpaid. People oh, yeah. disrespect you. Mm-hmm. And like, mm-hmm. yeah, cuz the actors like they come in to maybe just shoot their part of that scene or their coverage for that scene, which means like the parts of them that you can see. So they're there to do that. They get to go maybe take a break, have lunch, whatever, but you've still got to like stand there or in situations where like, let's take, for example, if we were shooting in like June, the way that it's cold, like your extras might also have to be like, let's say we're shooting a zombie thingy. So maybe they're like wet, they're, they're wearing torn clothing, but like, the main actors are just like, you know, comfortable and cozy. And every yeah. time we say cut, they get a blanket put over them. I'm not saying this necessarily happens. I feel like- Even on makeup. Yeah. For everybody, but- Star treatment. Yeah. I, there is definitely um, different ways that people get treated yeah. based on what their sort of role is. But those background artists work hard. They're, they're pretty tough people. So, but like from those drama schools, the small ones, like I, 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 don't, I don't even know if we have big ones, but Ooh. like there are a lot of institutions that have, um, I want to say main courses, but they're art schools, right? Like they might be private and stuff like that. I just wanted to know if you pick talent from there, like main actors from such institutions or, or you just pick generally, like from the 900, Oh, Did you so know that? Yeah. Casting for Amoya specifically. So Tozia Botta created the show and then she was there. The producer, Stephanie Dell was there. I was there. Our DOP was there. Um, another couple of like people who directed because there were four directors on the whole season. Um, we just put out a casting call. So even with Sambes, you put out the call and people who fit, whether it's sort of age range, whatever, are like production assistants and people now would send out, okay, if you're between these ages, these are the pages of script that we're going to give you or what's up to you so that you can get familiar and know like your lines. This is the characters that you can test or audition for and then people would come in so it was never really a cv based thing i mean there's yes there are people who we picked who maybe you've seen before but it was also it came down to who was the best person for that role the best person um who who sort of just worked you know because even when we're auditioning Sometimes maybe you, you could pick up on someone's nervous energy. So you're like, okay, cut, let's try it again. Or maybe you have to give a different instruction. Let's try it this way. Or can you do it for me like this? Because a lot of the time you are able to see within like two seconds. <laughs> I feel like it's two seconds if someone is talented mm-hmm. or like has it. Yeah. And you're able to definitely see if they do not have it. Like there were some auditions where I was like, I'm a bit more ruthless than everyone else. Mm. Although I, I know I said I'm like an emotional person, like when it comes to like business and things, I'm like, don't, don't, don't lie to people. Don't make people think that they're good. I'm like, no, there will be yeah. auditions where I'm like, I needed to stop within five seconds because I can tell it's going nowhere. But other people who are a bit kinder were like, no, let them finish. I'm like, guys, there's like 900 people to see. 
and I don't want to spend the night here. <laughs> like some people just, you know, you need to be able to say, oh, have, have you, have you ever been on the other side of that conversation? Like you are facing someone as strict as you. Mm, yeah, I mean, I did casting calls in South Africa for how many years? <laughs> how, how was the experience? Have you even really seen me in anything? These are the questions. So clearly, I know how to take rejection very well. <laughs> um, I think I definitely, I mean, having worked even in SA in, that, in the industry, even behind the scenes with directors or even being an actor, I think people are lucky in Zambia in a way, because I don't feel like people are necessarily cutthroat and ruthless. And I'm not saying that you have to be cutthroat and ruthless to get good results, because you can also be a gentle, kind and thoughtful production person or director or whatever, and still get the results that you want from people. Um, but yeah, I don't think a lot of, if we had to audition people here, the way that they audition you even overseas or an essay, like, I don't know that people would, people would be crying, leaving the room crying. Like there's things that get said to you that are just, huh? You feel it in your chest. But, 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 but don't you think that would be like a great approach to, to encourage people to actually like work hard for, for the roles that you guys call for? Listen, for me, I mean, I can only speak from my own experience. It's definitely rejection or the tough sets I've had to work on or being a background artist on like big film sets. Like I was a background artist on, um, what is Invictus with Clint Eastwood and I actually got to meet Clint Eastwood. That whole oh. other story. Oh, nice. <laughs> but um, I think being sometimes mistreated or whatever, it's not for everybody, but I think the industry oh. also makes you tough. And I think it's okay. Sometimes you have to toughen up a little bit. You can't be precious or very sensitive about the work or the industry itself. Because I think, you know, you've also got to remember as much as you're passionate about creating and, and maybe acting and portraying these characters, it's also a job. Like, it's yeah, okay. Yeah. Not the end of the world if you don't book that one. I know it can be hard, especially if you're trying to make a living. Which is like, for me, I just, I don't even know how Zambian actors are making a living, guys, because who? Is it that bad here? Just like, the salary okay, stories see, that I hear, yeah. I don't understand how people are paying rentals. I'm like, well, mm. what? You get paid how much? And like, you're almost like a lead on that show or, you know, like you're the second lead on the show. Like, hey, guys, you got to fight for your money. But that's another thing. I think it's, we don't have a governing body. We don't have a Screen Actors Guild. We don't have an association. Like there's all these artists association. No, we're here to help you. We'll do yeah. this. There's no actual policy and anything that's even being put into place where it's like a union and like, guys, you cannot pay people less than this to be a background actor. People kind of just make up the rates that they're going to pay you. And I think mm -hmm. even when we were doing um, I mean, I'm not, the, I wasn't the producer and stuff. I think people tried to be fair about how much they were paying people to, who are even background artists, because if you're going to be there from six in the morning until like 23, mm. like guys, you can't be giving people, there's people out here who are giving people 50 quachas for that. What is that? That's not even your transport. And, mm -hmm. and they didn't give you transport. Like guys, there's, there's, oh. there's some sets out there in this world, that nothing to do with like Zambezi magic. I'm not saying them or anything mm. but there are sets out here where people no. paid peanuts to show up and and they're doing it also because they they want to get their first break or they really love what they do and and they don't know any better so for me i'm a very sort of stubborn person yeah i wouldn't even say stubborn i would like to say i'm just intelligent and i'm about my business so even with contracts like i have a lawyer like someone look over this stuff and let me know what things you're seeing because I can't read all the legalese all the time and know if someone's trying to like maybe do a funny contract like I yeah. think it's important to start to educate yourself like even whether you're freelance or you're a creative or you're an entrepreneur or whatever I think contracts are something that we all feel like it should be like a subject that all of us or like a class we yeah. should all take 
because it's very important because you want to make sure that you actually get paid and you get paid fairly for the work that you're doing. Yeah. Are, are any local actors actually approaching it the way you're explaining it now? Like, are they attempting to at least protect their value for the work they do? Like when it comes to like Amoye, how many is, is the production behind Amoye protecting their, you know, their pay? Or are they doing it at a personal level like you, having your own lawyer to look at things? Um, I think, of course, nobody's trying to. I, I really can't speak on Amoya because I was not the producer on that. I just know, like, yes, I was taken care of. I was more than happy with my experience working on that set. I think the other thing is, like, I'm part of the production team. So I'm not part of the actual, like, the acting team. Like, I'm a crew member. So yeah. I think but when you're... On your outside perspective, do you think any of them are actually fighting for pay? Or are they just accepting it? I would like to think that people did because I feel like even people like critics been like in what, like as an artist, he's gone through things that he's shared with, you know, Twitter and everybody and whatnot. So I think you sort of learn things. And I think he definitely, I, I would assume, fought for himself and I think other people fought for themselves and I think also the whole production staff did want to advocate for people to be treated and 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 paid equally fairly. like yeah fairly I mean this was a show that had three female leads but then there were also three guys who were like supporting well actually four guys who were supporting casts that's a whole other love triangle situation in the, in the show but um I would like to believe that definitely because we were a female producer, female production team, um, we had a few guys on our set in the sort of camera departments and things, but I would like to believe that we really did what we said we wanted to do, which was make sure that even the women are paid fairly or also just protected. I mean, we had majority female directors. The only person who directed who was a guy was Joe. I can only speak for my set, but I definitely made it very clear from the onset with crew, like, guys, there's no sexual harassment, there's no jokes. Like, even if maybe you said something to someone one day and, like, they giggled, I'm like, maybe they're too scared to tell you that, like, I don't like you talking to me like that, or don't call me baby. Like, even with the actors where they do have these characters they're portraying, which are, like, very they're either husband and wife or whatever. I'm like, make sure that the language that you're also using when you're not in character doesn't offend someone, whether they're male or female. Like, yeah. It shouldn't have to be that experience because I do hear in Zambia and I've seen on sets that there's actually quite a lot of sexual harassment going on. So, so just, yeah. just on that topic, in terms of equal treatment and protection of women especially, do you think it's it's the same everywhere? Because at least you have the experience of South Africa and the States and so on. Do you think it's the same here or worse here? I Equal say treatment. I would uh. just say it is what it is. It's like standard. So, I mean, Hollywood were the people to first start things off and then everyone else developed their own film communities. But if you look at society as a whole, women aren't necessarily the most valued and there is a lot of just sexual harassment or things that are said because we also normalize certain behavior. Like people feel like it's okay to like come and touch me on my waist to say, excuse me, like in the supermarket. I'm like, guy, I don't know you. Like, don't touch me. Even if it was a woman who did that, I'm like, I don't know you. Personal space, boundaries, people. Yeah. But I think yeah. we've done things in a certain way for so long. So I can't say that like, oh my gosh, in Zambia it's worse and it's terrible. I would say that maybe we're a bit behind because like Hollywood at least had the Me Too movement. Things have happened to Harvey Weinstein and whoever else. And I think yeah. people have made regulations as like the industry itself to and put systems in place to protect women and women of color and things like that. But I think, again, we don't necessarily have systems here in place. Okay, so of, of, of the things... Of the things normalized, I, I know you're not going to go too specific, but on the things normalized, do you think it is cultural, that, that, that same culture that's outside, like the way you say it, uh, at the grocery store, someone would just come by to you, excuse me and touch your waist. Do you think 
it's it's the same outside as it is there in the um, in your productions like in in movie productions or is it slightly different and pertaining also to maybe like the we have a lot of dramas in Zambia like scandals the guy has to play arrogant is it the same outside and inside like the behavior of those those things that have been normalized mm, i would say yeah i feel like it is it's just maybe different languages being used or maybe i don't know examples i don't know how to, don't know how to, to phrase it but i just feel like examples <laughs> examples examples let me list you all the examples um, okay i don't really know hey <laughs> I can't like I, off the top of my head. I'm trying to think, and all I'm thinking about is the. Okay, title. um, I'll give I'll give one like cat calling. You know, cat calling, right? Yeah. So like the casting has happened. All the guys have been eyeing one specific girl. They're like that girl. She's she's hot and what? And then now they are in the cast. They're like, I've made it. I'm with this girl in the cast. Then they do the cat calling stuff. Does that happen? Yeah, a lot of things happen. Or even if you're doing, I mean, now when you talk about like doing even romantic scenes between people, you've got to make sure both parties are protected. No guy wants to be touched inappropriately. I don't feel like neither does the woman. And sometimes you have to be very close with each other and do things. But you definitely see people go a little bit too far. But it's also like you've got to be able to, to know to like stop stuff and pull people aside and be like, that wasn't, I saw what you did and that wasn't cool. Um, but you know, there's only so much that you can do. So sometimes maybe you, you have conversations with people, you, that's like a warning on their behavior. Um, sometimes you have to recast and um, fire. I mean, I've had to recast people before, but not about sexual harassment things. It was more about the quality of the acting or maybe just professionalism overall, you know, like you, you're aware that we're supposed to pick you up at this time today for us to go on phone and your phone is off. You're nowhere to be found. Your neighbors are telling us weird stories about you. Oh, this person is going to tweet about me. Um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> then you show up like five hours late, which puts all of us, in jeopardy because now we're starting five hours Delays. if yeah. you go to locations you cannot just book a location like locations cost money you can't just be like oh yeah we, i know we said we'd be here from 8 a.m until 3 p.m but now we're only starting at like 12 because you're late then yeah. you need to be in makeup wardrobe we need to test the lights on you we need to run through the scene we need to make sure the sound is good like it becomes a whole other thing yeah, I, I know okay. that we, I know that we have like a, we have like a ways to go uh, as far as like the industry in Zambia is concerned, but um, maybe off off the top of your head, maybe not maybe not off the top of your head, but like off what you've seen, uh, which areas do you do you feel like we could improve in or improve at? Um, I definitely think we need unions, but um, yeah. I think even just like training, because I feel like everybody sort of just learns, everyone's kind of doing, it's almost like old school, like in Hollywood, how you'd be an apprentice, because I feel like that's how most people are learning even how to work a camera, or use it. But we also now have the privilege of like, there's the different master classes that these celebrities do. There's YouTube and Google University, as I like to call them, where, you know, yeah. with cameras and things, we start figuring out how to do things for ourselves. But um, I definitely think we need systems in place. But I also know that there's so many people who have great stories, like let's say a great script. Mm -hmm. It's just that there's just no funding or access to things is like limited. So let's say now there's this whole Netflix Africa thing, right? Yep. Everyone wants to jump on board. I've got friends who've got shows on there or shows that are coming out. Um, and then obviously we've got uh, the one that's going to come out, the animated one. Awesome. But it's also like, okay, so how do you send your work there? A lot of it is again, even in the industry, it's like, do you know someone maybe who can connect you? Because 
actually yeah. ideally the way that it works is you need a literary agent to submit your work to Netflix. Do you guys know literary agents in Zambia? Someone raise their hand. I didn't Never even know that existed. Yeah. yeah. So then, then again, this is how, you know, different countries will also be shot in the foot and not be able to get their content out because it, it can be restricted. Or maybe, you know, you have to rely on, okay, so who's the one person who we know whose project is currently going ahead there? And then if they're not a person who, uh, what do they call it? The gatekeepers. If yeah. they're not a gatekeeper, maybe they'll pass on the information or pass on your script to the right person. And hopefully you can take it from there. But I mean, we've got a long ways to go, especially in terms of, I feel like, even just when you watch TV, right? So no channel specifically that I'm speaking about, but you watch TV and it's local and you wonder at times like, why we're still doing some things that are very sticky from like 1991. Like yeah. the comedy Dramas. or the whatever. Dramas. Dramas. Not everything. Or even, yeah, but even now, like telenovelas, such a thing like soapies. Everybody just do a soapy. It's like, peop- what about a black sci fi TV series? I mean, granted, the budget would be. <laughs> or like South Africa, when they did that sort of movie, I was, I was just taking a loop. I was like, whoa, Cr- <laughs> criminal <laughs> drama, you know? But that's the thing. I think sometimes we also don't need to look so far outside of our own culture or what we know. You know, like there's a thing that they say, like when you're in script writing class, they're like, write what you know. Yeah. Don't, yeah. You don't always have to force yourself. Like, I mean, I love sci-fi, so it's part of what I know. I can write something sci-fi. But like the next person can't. You shouldn't have to go and read textbooks and sit. Like, you shouldn't have to re-educate yourself in order to just like write a good script. Yeah. write it based on what you know which is what like Tsotsi was it's like people live that life that is a representation i think that's even why it did well globally but also in south africa and even throughout africa because it was relatable it resonated with people mm-hmm. so even with us you can still show you could do a whole entire series that's like set in the compound whatever that could even be comedy but it doesn't have to be slapstick we don't need to to do it in a very sort of kitschy way. Like, just show the people as the people are and who they are. Like, there's already natural humor in, in those personalities and the people that you find yeah. in those areas. So you don't need to actually add a whole other layer onto this character and make it slapstick. It's like sometimes just be authentic. And I think those are some of the things that are missing in some of our storytelling. So whether it's even in books and stuff. Like I think sometimes we miss the mark because you're trying so hard to make something like extra or bigger. And it's like, no, sometimes it's okay if it's just authentic. Like, mm. That's still good. What, uh, have you seen the movie, um, what's, the, what's the name again? Um, History. Witch no. something, a witch. Uh, what's the name? Witcher? I'm, I'm not, not a, a witch. witch. Yes. Yeah, I'm, what was, what's, what's yeah, what's your opinion on it? Like, when we're talking about authentic, how, what, what would you, your opinion be on that one? Did you guys see the movie? I watched it. That's why I'm, like, looking for uh, expert opinions. <laughs> I'm not an expert. I can only speak from my experience, but also I was invited to the premiere, so I went. Oh, nice. And yeah. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Okay, oh, I'm going to stop eating. Oh, dinner. We'll get back to, to that cup point. Mm-hmm. No, not hmm. dinner. I'm what having tea? food, but anyway. Oh, okay. The, those are nachis. Uh, you don't eat heavy at night either, right? Uh, no, and dinner's like at 6 p.m., so I already yeah. had dinner. Oh, oh, I remember. You, you mentioned that's, that. That's good time. That's good time. I don't eat I it try. after six. Let's not lie. It's not every day <laughs> that I, do that I manage to do things. Yeah, like yesterday, I, like I think I ate pizza all day. I was like, I should make a salad to go on the side of this pizza. And then I never did. So <laughs> life is yeah. life. Hey, I think. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I had bread last night for like, grapes for, for what it's worth. <laughs> you had grapes. 
bread. No, bread. That's Gingerbread, man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't admire your eating habits. You've got to start eating healthier, please. The older yeah, you know, you get, right? the older you get. I, I used to be cool enough to, to like wrap cheese around sausage and, you know, that kind of stuff. I can't do that. My old funny, age. funny, like three, three months ago, we we're like on a, on a, on an eating healthy kind of thing that we we're doing. I think the three of us, some more than others, but yeah. <laughs> No don't comment. Fire don't fire shot. No comment. Important though, I don't think it's it's smart for you to go to bed with like a, a full a full, a full stomach. Yeah. 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 So. Unless you're full of fruits, that's that is that's a different story. I'm craving fruit. And let's, yeah. Okay, let's get to it now. Fruits. Okay. Food yeah. Aside. <laughs> oh yeah. So your 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 view on uh, I am not a witch. So I said, I am not a witch is a parody. Did anyone here know that? Because I don't know. I, that's that's the thing. Like when, nope. when, I, when I watched it, there was a lot about it that was like, I know they're trying to capture the cultural thing, but something is off. I wasn't, I, I don't think it was quite clear for me, but I, I, I think now that you've said it, a lot makes sense now, a lot. So my take on it is, People had their vision. They made what they made. I think on my, I wish my old Twitter account hadn't been suspended because I definitely know I did a thread on it and my experience watching it. Did I find some parts of it to be problematic? Yes, but only because I worried that like, you know, even when I see, I think there was a, some American celebrity that I follow or something had put oh, watch, I'm not a witch or something on the IG stories like recently, like in terms of this whole like su- su- uh, support black art, whatnot. Yeah. And then obviously it also did well, I think at the Wales BAFTAs. It got yeah, they won a- awards there. Mm. So I also feel like though that people who are not of our skin tone might watch that not realizing it's a parody and then what are all the assumptions and the stereotypes that are in the film yeah. that don't necessarily so, make us look good it's like you know yes when we we're younger we all watched there's a zulu on my stoop or gods must be crazy but if you watch it now like it's very cringy you might still laugh at things but like for me i watch it and all the humor is gone because i'm like Ouch, this Mr. Bones. Movie. Yeah. Oh no, I, I don't watch those movies. Although I once had to hand that man who makes those movies an award. <laughs> oh wow. But uh, yeah, not my. I mind. think I That's think where I'll leave it. I think for me personally, <laughs> I would be okay. I would be okay with the cringe, but the the why. That it's like the clarity of like what they were going for, for me wasn't there. It felt like they were trying to be so serious because it felt, one, it felt very dragged on. You know how um, there, there, there right, are movies yes, where- What are you talking about? The same, I'm not a witch. Like, you know, you know a, a drama, like those serious dramas that are a bit do- of a documentary, you know where you have a long walk, a long stretch, like uh, even that horror movie, The Witch itself, there's a point where you know you're watching it. This scene is too long, but you can sense the intensity in in the same scene. Like maybe the chap is walking a long distance. There's a reason for that, and usually I don't find that in in um, parodies or comedies. But this one had a number of scenes, like her joining those other witches that were uh, like uh, mm-hmm. cast out of the village. There were a lot of those long, it, that's why I was like, it was, what's this trying to do? Is it a documentary?
um, yeah. to actually film. And then some people might walk out confused. I think with art, not everything is for everybody. And that's why I try not to be a person who is going to heavily cre- critique things. Because I'm also the person who, as much as I love like different composers, different directors, as much as I love different kinds of films, artsy, commercial, like I'm a Marvel person. So I love Marvel movies. Like I love yeah. old 90s X-Men um, animation. Like I collect comic books and things like that. But at the same time, I'm yeah. also the girl who will watch like when it's, I'll watch a Hallmark Christmas movie when it's October. Like I also, enjoy that like simple laid back storytelling that's very like oh it's so rom com and whatever but like it's something that like just makes me happy when I've got a sad day or whatever so I think you know we can all have diverse tastes and I just think like what you like don't like what you don't like yep yeah <laughs> I, I get that Oh, <laughs> my, I think my, my expectations were too high on this movie, to be honest. Like, you know, whenever I hear a Zambian movie has gone out international, I'm like, yes, let me see it. And I will get it. I will find it. I'll even go and watch it in a cinema. And then when I do, a lot of different experiences, very good experiences, mostly. <clears throat> but, but, but what do you look for in a... Because for for what for I, I just know that every movie has a has a story to tell, regardless of it coming from regardless of it coming from your country. Because you, mm-hmm. you have to like relate in a way or not relate. It has like a goal for for it coming out. So if it was a parody or it was a serious thing, it's I think a lot of movies are like open to interpretation regardless of their yeah. intention. So so like the way the way I got into the witch, right? Uh, I'm not a witch. You know, they would show you short clips like those uh trailers and stuff. They would show a girl who's being mistreated and stuff like that. And then I'm like, yes, a movie that shows how our culture can be toxic and stuff. So I was I was expecting a lot of um, exposure of like what happens in villages and stuff like that. That's why even just the this, the idea that was thrown in there of um, children who, who who are called witches in the village are cast out into the outskirts and stuff like that. It really hit me hard, even if um, the progression of the movie didn't really make sense to me. I felt like if this I, it, it doesn't feel so real like I, there's something off but again I know the way our cultures are this could be an actual thing that happens like uh, the, the scene where all the villagers come in around the a structure where that girl was kept inside policemen actually observing and it, it just felt like this is these are the injustices we see uh, here locally but at the same time something feels off Especially going to the uh, the chief uh, chief and like yeah I, I, I now now that you mentioned that it's it's meant to be a mockumentary kind of uh, parody it makes sense for some of those things but again it also kind of defeats the purpose for me <laughs> in watching it. I mean, when I say those things, by the way, just for clarification, that's what I was told when uh-huh. I was at the premiere, but I have no idea. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. But I think the last thing I'll say about the film is that it definitely had its social messages or the things that you've also said. And I think at the end of the day, I think we are very used to very stylized and very specific forms of storytelling. And especially when something has a message, it being delivered in a very specific way that's either palatable yeah. or... Um, that we can sort of recognize and go, oh, that's what that is. But I also think it's a piece of art that made you think. We've had a whole conversation yeah. about it. So like we all yeah. thought about it and we all felt something different or thought about it differently. So I think as far as art goes and standing the test of time, it made you think. So it was- I, I, would, I would actually say it's partly helped by the fact that there are not so many international Zambian films specifically. Because you have to keep in mind of each one of them. Like, 
Red bag. How many people outside Zambia know about that red bag movie? I'm just saying, in general. I, love I, I haven't really. Yeah? Yeah. Finally, somebody likes the book. <laughs> I like that movie, um, but I also think I can't wait to see Black Dollar as well. I hope it really actually gets on Netflix. So Black Dollar. See it, yes, it's a Zambian film. They've been doing so much promotion on it. It was meant to have its premiere, but then COVID happened. Yeah. Um, I cannot remember the director's name, unfortunately. Is it the but, same production as uh, Red Bag? I can't tell if you're being facetious or... I'm just asking. I'm just asking. <laughs> I just want Because if, if, I mean, okay, if, if it comes out to be the same as Red Bag, like... But what does ex- Black Dollar sound like? I mean, okay, Red Bag could be anything, mm. but like, doesn't Black Dollar maybe sound like it's like, it could be crime, gangsters, whatever. Like, doesn't it sound like it's a little more action-y? If if it yeah. came from the same people that made red bag, that black coin would be a coin, a uh, black dollar would be a dollar that fell into uh, some oil tank, and then the guy has to run around with it. That, that's the way I would picture it. <laughs> yeah, creativity is so... Hmm, that's why so, I kind of just... We are <clears> all <throat> collectively going to keep staring at you in silence because I think <laughs> the other thing that you need to learn how to do is like mm-hmm. appreciate other people's art. <laughs> you might not like it very much, but I think you I, need to grips with that film touched some of us. That film did. I, I did not say. I did not say it was a bad movie. I was just asking if it's the same production behind, behind it. it. Right. That no, was but, a whole but, lot of shade. But, what shade? Yeah. But Muka, Muka, uh, I, the, I haven't the really drunk shade. Like everyone, everyone has different tastes. I get that. Right, yeah, but from and that's that why time, I did. I did not. I did not even say anywhere that Red Bag was a bad movie. I did not say. You implied it, that. What, but Red Bag tone. was so big in Zambia. Red Bag was so big in Zambia. That's why I asked. Did it really go outside Zambia? Like, how many countries yeah. has it featured in? That's why I say that. I'm just throwing shade. I I really don't care about um, how. A comedy is done. I only care about the extent it goes because there's a lot that's in Red Bag that's funny. We need more comedy. You know, um, there are those very low budget movies that you find in the list, those IMDb lists. I actually look at them to see people struggling to make it into high tier industries. It's a difficult thing. And for us, we're basically in that low tier. And every time I hear it, Wow, this movie, everyone is talking about it. I actually give it a chance, and my personal taste does not change my interest in it spreading outside. Mm -hmm. If Zambians love it, why can't uh, Namibians like it? So when I ask that question, it's it's a general question. Does that humor... um, um, Does that humor translate internationally or not? I don't know. So that's why I was like, black, black dollar. Is it going to break barriers if it's similar to Red Bag? I think the thing that you need to do after Mm -hmm. we wrap this up is you need to go and watch the trailer and then you can form your own opinion. So all I'll say is I'm excited to see Black Dollar. I've Mm -hmm. seen the trailer. Um, Check it out for yourself. And my main point was I hope that it actually also gets put onto Netflix or gets a good deal there because I know that our like in the film industry things are expensive to make so let's hope you know everybody can sort of get paid as fairly or as close to what they deserve it's going to be an action movie like you mentioned crime and no i said what does it sound like i was asking you questions no just the genre like what what genre is it i don't want to spoil it for anybody who is going to watch this just go and check out the trailer but if you see if you see the genre it doesn't hurt go check it out for yourself (laughs) okay let me spoil it in this same in this same episode no No, we're good i I just asked for the genre i i don't know 
Just check it out. Uh, it's definitely, it's a drama, definitely. Mm. Okay, that's what I was asking but for. I don't know why it's so defensive. Genre elements. I'm not even defensive. I want to move on. Next question. <laughs> Because it's a, for me, I actually find it very important for us to be critical about the movies we produce. They should matter. No, People should critical. talk about. They should talk about our industry because there's these same challenges that you're talking about, like going into Netflix. Why would anyone care if our top tier movies are not even mentioned in Zimbabwe, for example? Have you guys seen, seen Zimbabwe? Have you seen Cook Off on Netflix? Which one? Cook off on Netflix. Cocos. No, cook off. Mm-hmm. Like when you're doing master cook or when you're cooking in the kitchen, cook. Oh, off. cook mm. off. Yeah. So you should check that one out as well. It's a movie. Yes, it's a Zimbabwean film. Oh, okay. Because I, I, I just recently, my sister just recently put me on the Netflix thing. So I needed a list of things to watch. It would be nice to see that. Yeah, check check your mark, man. Check them out and let's let's yeah, talk about this. Supporting black filmmakers. And then you can also, if you've never watched uh, 13th by Ava DuVernay about the US prison system and black people, you should check that out too. 13th? Yeah. It's yeah, just you saying should, You should also check out Epstein's the, uh, thing, documentary that and it's there since you like like uh, conspiracies and and crime blah 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 and everything. I haven't had. I just saw that time. yesterday when I was checking out Netflix. I haven't had the strength to watch it just because of everything that's been going on recently on like social media or even this morning waking up and hearing that that nineteen year old girl jumped out of an apartment building and broke her legs because she was trying to escape being raped. So the Jeffrey F. scene and his pedophilia, I'm not ready to watch that documentary yet because I just feel triggered these days. Which, which apartment? He was, she was coming from Jeffrey's apartment. No, no, no. This is a local Zambian story. A girl. Oh. It was, it was in the news oh. today. Oh, I, I, I missed to that. Her, but to escape, she jumped out of the apartment building. What, was the guy legs. caught? He seems to have been. He's been identified. We'll see what the law does. Hopefully, no, I, I, I hope. I hope. I hope there is real justice because there's some there's some issues that have happened in Zambia with youth specifically, and they've gone unanswered. I, I still have that mental picture. I haven't. I've, I never saw the pictures of that girl's like who was, whose face was ripped off. It, it, but it still remains in my head. In my head, it's like I'm, I'm even noticing. I'm, I'm starting to start. I, I really hate this top, this this topic. It's very sensitive. I really don't like the way the law is working in Zambia. It's not. It's not fair. Speaking of the law, uh, so you guys talked about uh, what's 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 been happening in in, in the U.S. Uh, George, George, George Floyd. Yeah, just uh, regarding African Americans, black people in that regard. Black people, I mean, because even if you're an immigrant, mm. I've got family who live there. If, mm. you, if your skin is black, you're black. The cops don't care if you're African American yeah. or you're a black immigrant, like from yeah. Africa. It's, it's, you're not safe. What's your so, take on that? Well, I definitely believe that Black Lives Matter and the people need to stop with their all lives or whatever because that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that there's a system. There's been systemic racism and it's been institutionalized. It's not been dealt with. I mean, they're still trying to pass the lynching law from like the 1800s. Yeah. Like that you, shouldn't, that you shouldn't be able to lynch people and get away with it because technically you still can because it's not illegal in the United States of America and it's 2020. Mm-hmm. So I think... Um, yeah, just explain lynching just in case that. some of us are lost. <laughs> I feel like everybody's seen a slave movie. Like, do I really need yeah. to explain lynching? <laughs> no, 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 let's let's, let's be critical. Like the word like, lynch itself, would a lot of people would miss it. I'm just saying generally. 
I think if someone's confused, they can, they can Google it for themselves. I don't know. Like it's making me feel funny to have to try and explain something that's like that, that violent. Um, yeah, but just look it up for yourself, guys. Uh, so what was I saying? I think, yeah, I think people are, are angry and people are fed up and people have been hurting for a very long time and nothing has been done. And I think this is, you know, there's people have been through, even with the pandemic happening, people are taking to the streets because it's just like, I, I feel like black people in America are tired. They're fed up. They want to see a change. And I hope that they get the change that they want. And I hope that something is done, but I mean, it's pretty scary times out there. Yeah. Not just out there, even locally. If you're yeah, especially yeah. in a vulnerable position, you'll be sleeping in a Chinese container and the government yeah. will be supporting that nonsense. Uh, we're opening that Pandora. No, definitely. No, we're not. Let's not open that. Let's not. It's yeah. passed. No, it's happening. I wasn't, wasn't going to talk about that. I honestly no, don't so, care so what, yeah, they, what they let, say. It's up to them. Uh, okay. <laughs> so let, let, let's get into like a conversation with Lila B. Yeah. Okay, so back to, back, to, back to that um, equality in the space, right? Um, yes. <laughs> you just interrupted wow. Moses so badly. How rude. <laughs> oh, you're saying something. I think maybe it's muted on my side. Sorry, Moses. I am muted on your side? <laughs> no, as in the way the audio fluctuates sometimes. Uh, Maybe I just yeah. uh, the, mm. the lag, huh? Blame it on the lag. <laughs> <laughs> I also did. It was silent. It was yeah, silent. Man. So yeah, um, I, was, I, was, I was talking about how did you get into the uh, conversations with Lila B from the, from the choice of platform that you're going to post the, the, the podcast on and to just the selection of the guests. Um, okay, so Conversations with Lila B was basically I'd wanted to do a podcast for a very long time and I missed radio. Um, and then I talked to a lot of like my friends who are on radio who have podcasts or do podcasts and I've got friends who don't even do radio who have podcasts and I was like guys what should I do I think the choice to put it on Anchor am, it is available on other platforms it's there on Apple Podcasts on Google like I used to know how to name them all there's like I think seven or eight platforms it's on but the choice to go with Anchor as its home was because it was just easy and let me be very honest with you with them with the many jobs that i have i didn't want to have to add a whole let me learn a whole platform or let me do this podcast yeah. this way and record it like this i was like yeah no i'd like to be able to record something and use whatever free resources it has and upload it onto there so generally, I don't do a lot of edits for my podcast, but I think that's also from years of being able to interview people. I can steer the conversation where I want it to go or rein it back in. Or sometimes I let people run away with it because it's still going to be um, good for the content. In terms of the guests that I have, it's some of these people are people who I personally know, who are my favorite people, people who are um, maybe change makers, maybe people who are entrepreneurs, someone, people who are doing things that are socially impactful, um, people who, you know, maybe specialize in things, whether it's like medical. So I had two episodes on COVID and the first yeah. one was with my friend. Um, and he was talking about, you know, sort of breaking it down in not so scary ways and this was in the beginning so that people could understand like it's important for us to social distance to wash our hands to wear don't be brave and think that you're not going to be the person who gets it and don't be brave and think you'll be the person who survives it although lately when i leave the house i'm seeing people at the shopping malls with no masks and i'm very confused yeah. that's why people think corona is over just because a lot of us have started going back to work especially as of last month this past Monday, but um, Corona hasn't gone anywhere, so I don't understand why we're still not being cautious. Maybe because um, and then the second episode, I sorry, 
I'll, I'll just, I just, I just said I, I think it's because it's people have heard that it's it's treatable now. Like it's it's um, uh, yeah, it's 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 its fatality rate has sort of decreased in a in a sense. It's uh, yeah. treatable. As far as we know, with our statistics, we're being told that like we haven't had that many fatalities, right? But even yeah. when we look at testing, what is our population? And even up to date now, how many people have been tested? So let's not fool yeah. ourselves yeah. and yeah. think that it's over. I think that's a very dangerous position to put yourself in or your family in yeah. or just anybody in society. Just everything that we've known about coronavirus and COVID-19 since the beginning, right? Everyday yeah. information has been changing. I feel like everyday information will also be changing because mm -hmm. medical professionals are saying it's something they've never seen before. So I think exactly. yeah. whatever, whether there's a conspiracy theory or there's a this or the that, I just think yeah. follow the actual regulations and things in place to protect yourself. But as yeah. for what this is and how it's going to get treated or eradicated or cured or the vaccine that will come we're yeah. only going to know those things in the next two years and sometimes we have to move through life without a knowledge of what something is like i mean when hiv aids first came out people didn't know what that was they didn't even understand it they thought you know it comes from this so it came from mm -hmm. here and you know it took years and, and and years for people to like finally understand that this was something that you, yes, you can prevent, but also something that you can live with if you take certain medications and that yep. this is also a, a disease that's going to live with us as a population in the world, basically until the end of time. I mean, unless you, the conspiracy theories about the cure and whatnot aside, I'm just saying, yeah. we also had to learn how to live with that. So I think even with COVID-19, we got to learn how to live with that too. Yeah, I agree. I was just saying that if this, if this is what's, going on around uh, the airwaves, then that's probably why people are more inclined to like, oh, just, you know, be at this point. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And especially even when you see authoritative figures not wearing their masks. Then yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, we had our ministers that caught it as well. So there was that, uh, that noise couple of weeks ago but i also do believe it's all when when we're dealing with things like a pandemic again like my other episode on it was like about alina who does women's economic empowerment foundation yeah or organization where she was going into the communities it's also like guys there's mm. language barriers yes um ministry of health came out with pamphlets in different languages but there's also literacy things then it's like even on radio people were asked to as stations create their own programming around it. They were sort of told by Ministry of Health. There's also yeah. a danger with that, which is are your, your radio hosts or whoever it is, are they capable and nuanced enough, educated enough, do they do enough research in order to have this conversation surrounding it? Because mm -hmm. there can be accidental misinformation. True. Maybe true. even the research that they do, they picked up the wrong research and then they're saying that on air. So it's all these different things where it's just like, I feel like we forget sometimes even as a country that like not everyone here speaks English guys and not yeah. everybody here can read, write, whatever. So of course things are going to impact the sort of um, poorer communities because there are those barriers. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, even just as a whole, as a country, we, we need to definitely, this has shown me that we need to do better in how we actually disseminate information or give yeah. out information and educate people and sensitize people. Yeah, everything has to be taken with a grain of salt. Yeah, yeah. It's actually true. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess that's that. And Mocha, you've been quiet for a while. <laughs> no, I, I, I enjoy these, these COVID conversations, and I found most of them are just the same as almost anything that you find is a conspiracy. Uh, uh, black skinned people uh, cursed by by default uh, uh, is the sun really moving around the earth is the earth flat I think we just oh, like you okay. said I, like you but said I, just focus on <laughs> just focus on on the information that is given and I mean for me that's as far as the conversation ends what does our government say what do the medical 
uh, people in, in charge of uh, medicine say about how to handle ourselves. I mean, it's, for me, it's that simple. So no, even no, going into the but, conspiracy. But, but, but as, as far as like the earth being flat is concerned, like some no, people, no, no. people say pizza is round and some say it's flat. So <laughs> it's I'm perspective. Not, I'm not a flat earther. I'm just saying it, it's, it's, it's perspective. It's perspective if, you're, if, you're, if you're looking, if, if you're looking at the world. For the record, I'm not a flat earther. I'm just saying. But people, just, people like for, take for this record, seriously. I'm just saying that there's going to be comments when this goes up. Sure, but, but I'm also a flat don't be a flat earth. Don't be a flat earther because you saw what happened to Bob's career. I know. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. I do love you, but yeah. also oh, Carrie Hilson and the five G theory. Oh, oh no, oh no. That, that's the thing. I know. I've opened another can of worms. The five G thing. Yeah, there, there's also conspiracies of I'm Corona saying. connected to five G. Yeah. I, I did not know Carrie Hilson like bought into that that crap. She's trying to revive her career because she Beyonce was one, in the it. beginning of the outbreak. She was like, "Y'all, it's the five G. That's why the Africans won't get it." And I even tweeted her. I was like, "Girl, sit down." Look, Beyonce like, destroyed her career, so she's just trying to revive it. Get, yeah, that's for clout. Yeah, Cloud. Beyonce. Yeah, I, I think. No, okay, I okay. Know, I don't know why we had to bring Beyonce into anything. To the yeah. beehive who have now seen <sighs> us go after that man, go after him. Do not come for me because I love Queen Bee. I know. Look, I look. Gary also said something about Beyonce. She she fired a couple of shots at her, saying that oh she doesn't write her own music, blah blah blah, this that. So <laughs> Beyonce didn't say Beyonce didn't say anything, but like her. Family, Beyonce never needs to say anything. Right? She's, she's the hive she's, is ruthless. Yeah. The, <laughs> the hive, hive is ruthless, yeah. and that's why that's, I'm worried for your safety now, because they yeah. don't find out where you live, bro. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. I, no, are I'm you? Not, are not, you? Not, are you part of Beyonce's church? No, I'm actually not. But I don't want to. Again, I'm not trying to attract attention from the hive. If this is actually going to air, I'm, I'm not taking shots of Beyonce. Quite, I'm, I'm actually, saying I quite enjoy some of her music, but I'm not a stan. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking about music though well what, what's on your playlist um on my playlist yeah i, I, don't, I haven't you know, met right her. now i'm listening to elaine a south african um musician in the i do actually i listen to heavy metal is someone oh. feeding you this information is this someone's name uh-uh. <laughs> no I listen to all sorts of music. No, no, no. I do not um, have any qualms about listening to. When I was younger, I listened to Marilyn Manson. Ooh. I grew up listening to Ozzy Osbourne. I Ooh. listened to Stevie Wonder. I listened to a lot of West Coast LA hip hop from the 80s and 90s. Nice. Um, yeah, so I, I listen to a variety of music. I listen to opera. Yeah, now we're down. <laughs> Huh. Favorite movie of all time. Favorite movie of all time. Oh my but gosh! No. Maybe all time is too much. Maybe, maybe favorite movie. Of- no, your question is just fine. Keep it there. Keep it there. Keep it. Let's keep it here. <laughs> Mr. Controversy strikes again. Um, no. <laughs> I think my okay. I would say my favorite childhood movie. No, I don't want to say Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. My girl. Okay. Have you watched huh. it? No. It's so no. tragic. It's sad, but it's beautiful. We can't share a favorite movie. No. No. I knew it. No. 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 I, I refuse. Let's, let's I refuse. I refuse. <laughs> Betrayed by my childhood. Because even when going to Russia, I had to find that movie. It took me a long time to find that movie when I found it, I felt the same way. <laughs> yeah, anyways. Uh, as a kid, it's very, it's, it's still, it, it's the, if you, if you want to see me cry real easy, play that movie and, ooh, it's game over. I, I I'll cry for hours after the movie's done. Nice. <laughs> okay, take your notes. Uh, it's <laughs> I, I, won't, now. I won't say if I cried. I'll just say, yeah, it was a... Uh, you cried. You cried. You can't even talk about it. Look at you. <laughs> Look at you. 
Favorite oh, yeah. director? Mm -hmm. John Woo, Spielberg. John Woo, Spielberg. Yes. Literally, it kind of has to be Spielberg, though, because, guys, okay. I'm a huge, <laughs> huge fan of which franchise? Yes. Um, no, she said Marvel. Marvel. No, Marvel, but did Steven do things with Marvel? I'm talking about... Ah, no, in Transformers? <laughs> he did Transformers movies. Okay, anyway. Yeah, let's go with Transformers. <laughs> That's the answer. Oh, okay, someone, which franchise? Someone, someone in the comments will, will figure it out. No, it's cool. I'll talk to the people in the comments. Good. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Any other questions? Mm. <laughs> what gives you a sense of wonder? I usually ask creative people this question. Sense of wonder, like wonderment? Sure. What inspires you to keep doing what you're doing? I think it's... I wouldn't still be doing what I was doing if I didn't feel like I made connections with people and if I didn't feel like I had conversations outside of what I do yeah. um, about the stuff that I've done or just whether it's like somebody was affected in a positive way or maybe made a decision based on like whether it's something they heard on the podcast or something they saw that I've worked in. I think, yeah, having some sort of Impact, whether it's small or big, I think that's what keeps me going. I right. mean, basically, I'm an actress, so I mean, don't we just want attention? <laughs> so I guess yeah. what I'm really yeah. saying yeah. is, what keeps me going is the fact that I get attention, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> cool. So it's, it's like, it's, um, it always has to do with some, the, the expectation, like that attention that comes nothing happens as a precursor to the drive like for you to continue no, 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 doing I'm what kidding. you do like it's not it's not really about the attention no but what like inspires me to do what i do is just and i don't know it's like the thing i said when i wanted to be a social worker i was like i wanted to make an impact or make a change or make a difference and i think for me, that's why I'm like, I feel like that's my purpose on mm. this earth is like to tell stories, to be a storyteller, to share information. And hopefully it's information that's helpful, not harmful, and that's positive and not negative. And that's just kind of why I do what I do. Because I think there is enough negative messaging out there. There's enough of you can't do this or you're not good enough or whatever other negative messaging that exists. And I think, I, why not spread cool. more positivity? Yeah, and, and I think that's, that's very important. Yeah. So the connections that we, we will create and uh, the, the love that should be shared to, to other people as well. And you've, you've spoken about uh, directing, filmmaking, the podcast itself, the, the experiences you've had, and and everything, have and voice uh, and voice acting, yeah. How you you did voice over? Oh, yeah, okay. Voice acting, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, do you attribute that to to a to say, are you a believer? Do you attribute everything you've done to uh, to the to your faith? Or, I mean, I, I I don't want to say Christian, but religion. Uh, uh, yeah, religion uh, to, to a deity. Um, I'm not a super religious person, but I meditate every day, and meditation is its own form of prayer. I have studied oh. Buddhism. I have like. A, a, of like okay catholicism okay some forms of christianity but i wouldn't say that i belong to a denomination and i don't know that so i'm not going to put anything on religion for myself i would say that i think the things that i do or whatever can just be attributed to the fact that like i just don't know how to be any other way so i guess if you want to 
other people would say, yeah, so give it up to God. You were made, you know, like how I said, I've got a purpose in life. I think that's where you got that. Like I do have spirituality. So I think that is my purpose in life, but um, yeah. What, sure. what does that mean? Like the, the phrase, I do have spirituality. Like what's, what's that spirit? Oh Lord, open up Pandora's box. Um, no, just, just generally, like, you know, there has to be, whenever you add that element, there is always something behind it. So like, what do you mean by it? Yes. So like how I said, I'm not, I don't belong to any specific church or religion. I think when you talk about spirituality, you're just saying like, I do believe that whether it's believing in the universe or that there's a higher power, like I do believe in those things. Excuse but not me? not I defined they're not defined i have not said oh it's this and it's god and it's this christian god or it's this and this is what i believe that it is like i think i just i don't know what it is and i don't know that so I. Even would you would you say like if if you're if you're giving like if you're going to pray right just in general i'm not saying you're praying to a specific what if you're praying it's like you've thrown a message into the vast wilderness and hopefully someone picks it up. Like, I mean, I how, guess how... It's like in organized religion, they obviously tell you who you're supposed to pray to because they don't want that message to get lost in the ether. But um, I mean, I meditate. I'm very much a hippie, guys. Like I was making sage smudging sticks yesterday. Like I'm a hippie. Um, I believe in things like the universe and whatnot. So for me, when I'm meditating, it's more about the universe. It's more about connecting to nature, which someone else might say that, you know, that nature, everything else, it is God. So, yeah, I don't get offended if someone, you know, assumes that I'm religious or wants to say, oh, clearly you are religious. I just think it's a, it's a bigger conversation, but yeah. I'm not yeah, no, I get it. Like where where we're getting at is just on the surface because it's 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 a bit peculiar. So like from the way I'm picking it up, I would I would ask another question because it's kind of you know witchcraft in itself. Um, I'm not even saying Western what. It also uses the belief of I'm not, I'm just saying in general. <laughs> you haven't put a label on it, but for them in those beliefs, they do believe in nature having that spiritual power and stuff like that. They believe in celestial energies and they use that to their betterment and stuff like that. Like they, there's a, there's a lot of factions. You, you wouldn't draw any comparisons to it, is it? I don't know if you even have thought I mean, about I'm it. Just, I'm looking at Moses and he's just like, wow. Um, but also, I mentioned making sage smudging sticks. I think this is where you're just like, oh, witchcraft. Um, I do not, I am not a practicing witch. I do not practice witchcraft. Have I read about it? Yeah. But I mean, if I was to be a witch, I think I would like to be like on the white magic side of things, obviously, not doing dark, evil, I was about to swear, stuff. So yeah, I don't really have like a formal... Oh, okay, because in in obviously. general, in general, I just wanted to know if you have seen the like comparisons, because there are some elements that kind of sip into other beliefs. Religion? Yeah, like um, you know, you know, there are people who actually follow certain doctrines that you find in some faiths, like Christianity, and they won't attribute that to God or Jesus, but they still practice. So I just wanted to know if you ever like thought about it, like because um, clearly you even know there is dark witchcraft, I think, and white witchcraft. Oh, Wicca, but anyway, yes, I've read oh. about it. Um, but I mean, guys, do you celebrate Christmas? Do you know that Christmas was originally a pagan holiday because Jesus wasn't born in December? So yeah. like, we could keep going on and on. <laughs> There's so many. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. I just wanted to know if there was. Were attached to. I just wanted to know if you had delved into that like you know one thing i i kind of care about a lot when it comes to people and their beliefs is that they know what they believe in so if you have made that comparison like you've actually looked at them and said oh energy is here energy is there but what's the difference because 
people, some, some people blindly believe, whether it's in Christianity or what, they blindly choose to believe in something. And then the real questions that they're supposed to ask, they don't ask themselves. And when the truth finally comes, it hits them in such a way that it, it disturbs their whole mechanism. Because imagine, imagine someone falling out from the Catholic Church. Why does that person fall out? Because all of a sudden he realizes there's something he doesn't believe in that they believe in. And then his whole belief system, you know, everything you are kind of anchored partly on that belief. So like you, the way you meditate and stuff like that, all of a sudden you realize my meditations were going straight to the enemy. You know, it, for me, that's the most dangerous thing. So I prefer like for you, you have drawn some, like you've read about me, why it's, no, we said Wicca. Wicca. You've heard of yeah, it? you've read about those things. I, I feel more comfortable. Like you have to know exactly <laughs> where you are. So I, that's why I was like, just curious. But meditation isn't a... Uh... No, it's no, not really a spiritual my, my thing. My energy isn't going, yeah, it's not being directed somewhere. Meditation is about connecting with yourself. So mm-hmm. what you're doing is you're breathing and you're accessing um, your body in terms of like, okay, where do I feel pain today or whatever. You can do guided meditations with like positive affirmations and, and wording and things about relaxation connecting to your higher self um and just being still in that moment and being one with your body like stillness like i told you guys at the beginning like i'm a busy body so for me to even sit still it's hard but that's why i also have to do like meditation and that's why i love practicing yoga because those are things that allow me to like connect with myself and sort of it's my me time as well because I do I am that person who I have people pleasing tendencies which I learned in therapy Mm. Um, I've been letting go of them but generally I tend to overextend myself for other people and I don't really leave much room for looking after myself for my own thing so So it's more it's, it's more of a therapeutic type of thing yeah but I feel like everything's therapeutic like on my phone I've got this folder that's titled therapeutic apps mm. Jesus in my therapeutic app um color color what is it called color me it's like basically mm, yeah. by numbers on your phone that's on there like those are things that i find therapeutic so listening to music painting even with whether it's the paint by numbers on the app or it's an actual i was looking for a painting i've done but i can't see one sure. but yeah has, has your belief system always been like this, like growing up, up to this point? Like, I think I was a problem, child, because I did used to go to church, but I just had so many questions. So many questions. Then I don't necessarily know that, that was appreciated. Because <laughs> I am a very, like, I'm a questioning person. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Do I even remember when I was like super young? Which so church did you go to? I think. Is it Protestant? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and okay. I even did like Bible study. Like, guys, I can yeah. sit here, rattle off all the names of the books and things. I can tell you some Bible verses. We can discuss it in depth. Like, because the one thing I definitely do know is even when I was questioning, it also made me, as a person who questions things, it makes me read up on things. So it's not like mm-hmm. I haven't read the Bible. It's not like I haven't had conversations or whatever. But I think in doing my own independent research i just said okay there are elements i feel like it's like with life the elements of this that i want to take and the elements of this that hey i don't know if we need to take all of that because you know i also feel like even in this day and age people i mean from the beginning of time people have used the bible to sort of it's been weaponized and used to oppress groups of people or to you know, you take the wrong verse and, and use it in a way to either manipulate yeah. or control people. And I think that's the part that you were saying earlier about like, are you capable of independent thinking? Or are you capable of saying, okay, a lot of what's in the Bibles, these things happened at whatever specific time, right? These, these men who did these, what would now in 2020, heinous, horrible things with children or with multiple wives or whatever it is or with their children's wives 
those things, it's like, let's not carry that into our lifestyle currently right now. So I think you do have to be able to like see and read things and like either learn a lesson, take from it what you can. And then if something isn't necessarily something you agree with or that works for you, then I also think it's okay for you to not apply that in your life. Because I don't think life is about applying everything that we come across or are told or taught because some things are not going to work for you. We're all individual people. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 like, like, I like people who actually think about the things that matter. It's, it's, it's a very sad place. Like right now, a lot of your, like just the practice that practices that you have, the discipline that you carry for you to do all the things that you do. It takes a lot of dedication and very small things that we take for granted can just steer us far away from who we can be. You see a lot of reckless youths right now. It's because they have nothing to like, no, no proper foundation on them. So for me, like looking at uh, what, you, what you've said, I think the greatest strength you have is knowledge in itself. Cause I'm still, I'm, I actually feel possibly, I'm just saying, I assume you are still on your journey exploring that spiritual, let me use the word spiritual uh, sense that helps you keep your drive in your career and stuff like that. That's, it's a very long journey and people take it for granted. But so I, I, I actually. Stop practicing those things. I feel like that's <laughs> the same way with your faith. If you pray, whether it's every day or whatever, like your connection to God is growing stronger. So I feel like whether it's meditation or whatever, it's not something that um, I think I'm ever going to stop finding new ways to connect with or something deeper and more meaningful. Like I think that's the journey of life itself. And yeah. Even with human beings, we're always all searching for connection. So whether it's with another human being, whether that's with God, whether that's with the planet itself in whatever ways, I think as human beings, that is the one thing that we all have in common is that mm-hmm. need for connection. And even now, like with COVID, we've all seen like it's it's been rough for people, people who maybe in other countries, especially where you live in in different cities from your family or whatever. Like I'm lucky my dad managed to like come here and stuff and he's been here, but I think it, it would be hard not seeing people for however many months. So also people who are huggers, I'm not personally a hugger. I do not like being hugged, but I know there's people who are like, I can't wait for the day that I can like hug someone. Cause like I'm a touchy feely human being and they miss that form of connection. Yeah. Ah. I'm actually happy with it (laughs) because usually when we reach this point, it turns into, (laughs) I'm the the controversial guy. You've you've checked out the way I was asking you those questions. Uh Yeah, it it hits, it hits some people. (laughs) When you watch it back, just keep looking. I think I've rolled my (laughs) eyes. I've gone, whoo, and I've been like, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but it, it hits them so badly that they get into, you know, I, I honestly just ask questions to get them, like the overall perspective. It's, it's, these debates are not very productive. Like a guy trying to convince someone to change their faith in one meeting is a very, depends anyways, but it doesn't really work and out. And I'm stubborn, I ain't changing, so good luck yeah. with that. Yeah. I'm like, and that's oh, why I'm like, I'm like, like yeah, that's why I'm like, when I asked you the questions, we're talking like this, you're actually sharing your perspective. And I have some overarching questions just for clarity. And people mis- misinterpret that as, mm, it's trying to change my mind. It's, it's not oh, like yeah. that. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, right. it's, but I feel like Lee, if you can't you... have peaceful, sensitive, or like peaceful conversations and dialogue with other people, then you've got to look at like in therapy what they say, what is my ish and what is that other person's ish? Because sometimes yeah. if you feel like someone is coming at you, you've got to re-examine like, why is it triggering you? 
Maybe yeah. it's not about the question yeah. that's being asked. It's triggering you personally and deeply on another level and you need to figure that out and you might need to heal something there because sometimes mm-hmm. a question is just a question. Yeah. And now, just, just, just on the top, like, um, how do you feel about the way people do have these conversations in general? A lot of people, you know the, the phrase, I'm triggered, uh, that's a triggering statement, you know, those type of, how, how, how do you think that affects conversations in general nowadays? Because it's, 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 it's like intense. I don't think that you should ever be using the phrase itself, I'm triggered, in order to escape or get away from having a difficult conversation. I don't think it should be a blasé statement. But trigger, triggers come, it comes from um, behavioral therapy, right? So in the psychology world, everyone has their own, whether it's emotional triggers, you have people, places, things triggers, especially when you get into like dealing with addiction and things. There are things that are going to like set you off. But I think you can't just use it as a throwaway statement to escape having a bigger or deeper conversation. I think some people, you're also within your rights though to say, this conversation is triggering me. Um, It doesn't always mean that you're shutting down the conversation. I think the most helpful way to handle things is to say, okay, I feel triggered right now. I'd like to take a step back. Can I come back to you and have this conversation at a later date, place, time? Because right now, emotionally, I'm not able to. Like even when you said, define what lynching is actually I got chills thinking about it and I was just like uncomfortable even defining it because I even saw it in my head so like it triggered me but I was like okay let's push through that it's not now time for me to be like okay thanks for triggering me peace like no because we're not gonna grow and growth is uncomfortable right as human beings we're constantly growing shifting changing that's that's what life is it's growing there's only one thing that's happening to us. We're all getting older. And unfortunately, if you're not trying to get wiser, <laughs> that's its own You issue. remain dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say it like that, so I was like, mm, uh, yeah. you know what I'm, I'm the controversial guy. <laughs> I did call you Mr. Controversy, so, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, do, do you guys have any last questions for Madam Lee? Any last words for the peeps out there? No. Yep. Plus, what are you working um, on? Okay, like, is it is it um, Lee Putumile, it's or me. is it Lee Lee Putumile? <laughs> and then it's not. I don't know why my name is being said with a slightly Serbian accent, but um, then it's Putumile. Putumile. Put, uh, Putumile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's really like for people at home and whatnot, because in the media world, I'm known as Lee. And I like to think there's two different people. There's the person who people either see on TV or doing media things and whatnot. And then there's, the, they're all part of me. They're both part of me. But then there's like Putumile, which is like somebody's sister, somebody's daughter. That's a whole other vibe. I was actually going to ask, so, since uh, uh, you've been an actress as well, like, are you in character right now, or are we talking to the real person here? Good person. Oh, okay. You can't, you can't give that away? <laughs> no, of course I can. Um, no, you're talking to me. Um, okay. I, I'm just, not very, just I'm not always just being interviewed and things, but this is, this is me. This is who I am. I feel like all my friends who watch this are going to be like, yeah, you are you. You are weird. You are awkward. You said some controversial-ish. Yeah. But yeah. Um, like, oh. also a controversial person. Yeah. Wait. No, that, that was she not likes my girl. And she's also controversial. We like, should no, probably no. host a radio show together one day. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It'll be like hashtag that, controversial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, are, you, uh, are you working on something that people that, that you want people to know about? Just um, podcast stuff. Uh, Moses is busy trying to get me to explain myself. Um, I'm working on something in TV that I can't disclose right now. Uh, but um, it's more thing. behind the scenes. It's script writing. It's um, sort of producing. Black dollar. <clears throat> but, you know, it's, it's, I used to be a host of a morning talk show. And I'm uh-huh. now 
going to help other people and put other people in front of the camera doing a similar format of show? Hopefully in PJs. Um, yeah. I mean, most a of local... the time, guys, let's be honest. I'm wearing a, a mundane kid t-shirt, but like this was me dressing up. For oh, you're a fan of mundane kid yeah. as well? I'm in the comic even. What? <laughs> I have a little character. The girl who's in love with, with Mundy, little Lily. That's me. That's you? Because I was such a big fan and London and Benny are friends. Yeah. And they yeah. just, just surprised me. There was like an episode with oh, me sick. and there have been. I've appeared in the background and I'm like, because ah! I'm a comic book fanatic yeah. as well. So I'm like, I'm in a yeah. comic. I was talking to them about m making a game. You know, that would be dope. A mundane kid game because we've been trying to build a game. But yeah. It would also be cool if it was an animated um, series. It would also right? be cool if it was a feature film. It would also just it would just be cool if it expanded. All that universe media. Has, yeah. has so much. And I think the reason why I love Mundane Kid is because I see a lot of myself in Mundy. Like even when I was younger, like I had that imagination. Like I was guys, I'm, I'm gonna say something and people are gonna feel like I'm weird or they're gonna think I'm a witch. When I was younger, I used to think that I could fly. Like, I have memories where I'm like, I was flying. I was yeah. floating. I was not on a broom. Don't come at me like that. But yeah, I was like, oh, I, I was a fairy when I was younger. So I have I a feeling know. that was coming to me. There's mm. no judgment here. Mm. I thought I was Spider-Man. <laughs> some, some no, no, no. It was more about the people in the comments. I'm saying they shouldn't now start saying, I'm a witch. No. Uh, let me give them something else to think about. In my family, I had a great grandmother who used to have, like dress up all white, keep white plates, white dishes, white everything. And my mom, after some time, told me that she was a white witch. And in her childhood, she used to have a lot of experiences with snakes. <clears throat> and, and I also had some experiences with some snakes. So witchcraft is a very... Very it's big topic. Weird. Like, yeah, it is a big topic because I'm about to confess something else. But also, like, uh -oh. I think it's more of intuition and empathy. Like, um, it's it's a bit of a sad yeah. thing to say, but a lot of the times, if someone like who I know or close to me, um, when they die, I dream about them. Like, it's almost like at the time that they're actually dying. Like, it's weird. Whoa. But anyway, that mm. happens. I I had that with my Scared. dad. Except I rebuked him and he disappeared. Hmm. Very weird stuff. And on that heavy note, <laughs> plugs, please. Yeah, like what are your um, handles, plus. your socials and stuff? Uh, if you want the real controversy, follow me on Twitter. The handle is <laughs> at Leela B underscore. <laughs> like, no, it, uh, I might swear at you... Friends, celebrities, I've been blocked by people because we've disagreed. Is that why your previous account got suspended? Yeah. I think probably the Twitter even wrote to me and said, like, stop emailing us because you violated a rule. But probably uh, because I told a rapist where to get off and apparently hmm. Twitter is okay with white supremacy but not okay with me saying that people are racist or that they're rapists. How, how, how on that's that's how also happening with that, that kid's app. What's the name again? That you want for a few seconds videos. TikTok, What's the name? If you say Black Lives Matter, yeah, your content gets lost or your account gets suspended. You know, different rules mm. for different races. This is the world we live in. Yeah. Um, but my other social media handles, I think my Twitter is at Convos W Lila B. And then my IG for my podcast is Conversations with Lila B. And those are all the public forums you can catch me on. Give us oh, the yeah. private. I told, I told I told Moses that that ain't gonna happen. My private Instagram, my private. I will not accept your request unless we have met in person and we've spent time together. And I feel like I like you as a friend. Oh, I didn't know you like me as a friend. Oh, you meant in general. Oh dear, overthinking things. You <clears throat> meant she doesn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh we're so grateful to you thank you very much for for spending your time this has been great it's been epic it's been interesting 
we mm-hmm. hope to have you again because there's a lot that's that's about to change even with our format we're using this one for the covid period mostly but it would be interesting to have you again and talk a bit more in detail for specific things um we're also doing some works on our side community works and stuff to be nice to have your input there as well well it's been a pleasure talking to you guys today thank you so much for having me on the podcast and the actual fan like actually watch it actually listen so um, wow yeah it's been fun for me and uh yeah just thank you thank you right. we agree <laughs> all right so this was thank muka you. Diano Tumelo. Moses. Okay. That was great. And Lee. (laughs) And Lee. And we are out. Peace. (laughs) Peace.